Welcome to Sushi Life Coding. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at curve and how we can manipulate it with geometry nodes. All right, so I've done this in the past. So basically, normally, when doing uh, geometry nodes, we are using mesh, but apparently we can also use a uh, curve like Bezier. So this is a curve object and I'm gonna reset the positions. Let me hide the cube for now. So this curve, I can go to edit mode and I can just select all and then delete. And with curve, uh, we can actually do like a like a drawing. I've done this in the past. And I just want to show it to you again. So we can draw curve like this and then we can just manipulate it with geometry nodes very quickly. So geometry nodes with curve selected, new geometry nodes. Okay. So this will actually behave still like a like a curve object. And with uh, geometry nodes, of course, we can turn this curve into a mesh, kind of making like a sweep along the curve. Um, let's create a curve circle. So, so this is what we already know. And we can control the radius of the curve. And of course, uh, at this point, let's save the blend first. So curve comprehensions. At this point, you can do a lot of things actually, because this is like a curve objects in Blender. Bezier curve, in fact, you can go to edit mode and you can play around with the radius and tilt. Uh, this tool, um, this tool actually have a shortcut. Let's let me. So you can select multiple points, and then you can select this. Or normally, I just use Option S, Escape first, and then Option S, and then I can scale. I can scale the curve manually. So this still pretty cool. It works both way with. Blender edit and also still works with geometry nodes and of course uh, we can with the with latest latest geometry nodes we have curve parameters remember this uh, in the previous video you can use like a curve float and use this vector of the curve plug this into the value and this can affect the radius of the curve. So set radius. When you are doing this, however, be careful the the manual editing will disappear unless you probably unless you capture it beforehand. So we're gonna replace this with the new value from this guy. So the nice thing about factor, of course, it's looking at the whole curve and then replacing it with this value so you can make this kind of result quite easily so if you want the thin at the at the beginning and the end you can make it the curve like this and then you can always map the curve like so okay so this is cool why because it's still working like a curve, like I said. So you can draw multiple multiple curve, and it's still working. Uh, this guy is actually behaving like exactly like a, its name, uh, the profile curve. So it can be a curve. It could be like a Bezier, I believe. Bezier segment. Plug this in. Yeah. See. Uh, you need to play around with this but you get you should get the idea it's a lot of control there but for now just keep it simple circle and okay you can continue and just keep drawing and if you want to this to be more interesting of course so this is a, just a curve object, right? Remember we have the cube. 
we can subdivide this cube, become a ball. I'm using control three. And we can use this as a reference for our curve. Okay, so our curve is not just floating like that. I'm gonna delete everything. And we're gonna use this uh, and enable under draw tool, we can enable surface instead of cursor. Cursor is, a, cursor is actually really useful as well, but for now, we're gonna do some kind of art. So I've done this also in the past. And uh, the nice thing about this method is that the curve works like a accumulatively, you know. If you, okay, you can draw this kind of pattern on top of the polygon, but it will also works on the curve itself. So the effect is accumulative and then you are, yeah, I think it's actually yeah, doing the drawing accumulatively. It's just, we don't have maybe not enough resolutions. We can use resample here, resample the curve, something like this. So you have control over the radius of this curve and also this. If you want this to be more random because you're making like an artwork, you want, you can uh, use random value. Just plug this into the radius. This will be more random. So the final result is a curve, but also it is a mesh, so you can subdivide it. It's really weird. If you try to apply this, I think it's not gonna work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Uh, in order to make this into a real mesh, you just right click and convert into mesh. This will kind of bake the geometry. But for now, we have this live geometry still. We, we are working on it, so go back. What else? So what else can we do here? Uh, I want to further just work on this. So edit mode. So this setup, I built it from scratch, but I think it's becoming sort of like a tool. Oh, remember, we can also fill the caps. So all our strokes is becoming like a, this kind of weird abstract looking worms. If you notice, okay, the worm, if I draw it like really short, it's becoming this really weird looking Y because we resemble it using the counts. Maybe we want to use length instead. Okay, so this, so we, we can measure the length of each curve. And now, whether it's short or long, it will have uh, the same kind of form. Okay, so I think this is quite really nice. It's becoming like a tool. You can keep, you can save this as a tool and then you can just reload it whenever you need it. So you're like painting, painting worms basically on top of this sphere. You, know, you can just keep going <laughs> it's pretty crazy but yeah this is also something because this is a it's a mess basically you can just use remesh modifier on top right so you have you end up with this and then you can send it to maybe procreate or something just do a painting um, yeah for now let's go back it's something that I haven't used Maybe I forgot to mention. Oh, anyway, if, if this is becoming the tool, okay, like I said, I'm just going to duplicate this. Delete. Now we have two, right? Um, I will make this into a new tool. I want to do something different. new curve objects and this is going to be the tentacles for our 
creatures. Let's do a draw. This time draw it on the cursor. Yeah, let's draw it on the cursor. Oh, yeah, and then just make a couple of stroke like that. It's still doing the same looking tentacles, but we want to use this float curve instead of random value. Okay, so, so we have that. We can reverse the curve like this. So we have like a ten tentacles. So I think this is like the, the real power of geometry nodes in Blender. So it should in general works with a curve and mesh objects. Who knows, maybe in the future, geometry nodes can work with other objects like grease pencil and also bones. So that's really gonna be fun. With grease pencil, of course, you have like a, like a strokes, similar to curved strokes, but you can animate grease pencil at the moment. It's just a simple curve. I think curve can be deform using yeah, you can use shape keys and animate the curve, but I'm not gonna do that. Just gonna keep doing this. If I'm not wrong, okay, this is the tentacle and we are using the curve parameters. Curve parameter goes from zero to one. We can actually map range of this vector, I believe. So just remap this into new value. And then we gonna use simple math, like you can use sine wave or modulo or modulo or ping pong. And we can pipe this value into the radius. I think we should get to, okay. <laughs> this is a modulo. You can try using ping pong and yeah, I think I quite like this and just combine the two, you know, combine this and this together, multiplier. So we get something completely different. This ping pong value works on top of everything else. <laughs> Look, okay. It's really abstract looking, but I think it's, I, I kind of like it. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what I want to show you. So let's summarize what we are doing, what we, what we just did. We have curve objects that's being manipulated by geometry nodes. So we actually have two different version of this, you know, like a stroke, like a, I call it like a curve geometry nodes effects. You can, you can still work on this curve. It's becoming like a tool. And the tool works with uh, Blender's own like uh, interactive manipulators like uh, draw and you can snap it to cursor or surface. On top of that, this is like a, of course, like geometry nodes modifier. So you can have multiple geometry nodes actually and just keep continue with it. You can even use like a point and volumetric if you really want to. So with this guy, okay, geometry nodes, we can create a new geometry nodes and then this time resemble set curve radius. Instead of using curves to mesh, you can use point to volume and volume to mesh. This will give you something completely different. Okay, the radius maybe F. I think okay, we can use the radius from here. I believe we can capture the radius and just pipe it in. So you gotta play around with this value. 
Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> the, the tentacle is a little bit fat now, but yeah, it works with the volume. Very cool. Okay, this resemble 0 0.067. Okay. Maybe smaller value is better for volumetric and play around with this value. So we have now three different curve that has been turned into something else completely thanks to the geometry nodes. Okay, so that's pr probably uh, enough for this live noting. Hopefully you find this useful. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.